Hello good day viewers. In this tutorial we are going to learn how to find the derivative of x to the power of n from the first principle. Remember that if you have y to be equal to maybe x to the power of 3, if you are asked to differentiate this function, dy over dx is equal to, this 3 will drop down to multiply, you have 3x to the power of 3 minus 1 which is equal to 2. And hence, if y is equal to x to the power of 3, the derivative of y with respect to x is nothing but 3x squared. Similarly, if you have y to be equal to x to the power of n, dy over dx will be equal to the n will drop down to multiply. You have n x to the power of n minus 1. And this is nothing but the derivative of x to the power of n. So we want to prove that the derivative of x to the power of n is equal to n x to the power of n minus 1, but from the first principle. Let's get started. From definition, dy over dx, which we can write as f prime of x, is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of the function f of x plus h minus f of x whole divided by h. This is just the definition from the first principle. All right, now let us substitute everything. Remember that our f of x is equal to x to the power of n. So for f of x plus h, we are going to replace x with x plus h. So we have f prime of x to be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, remember that our function is x to the power of n. So instead of x, we have x plus h. x plus h to the power of n. Minus f of x is just x to the power of n. All divided by h. So the only thing we need to do here is to expand this. And how can we expand a binomial term to an nth power or n exponent? We can simply apply binomial theorem, right? So remember that if you have a plus b raised to the power of n, this is nothing but the summation of um, n combination r, a raised to the power of n minus r, b raised to the power of r, where r begins with 0 and ends at n, right? So every single term can be simplified using this expression. Uh, for example, if you are looking for the first term, you substitute r equal to 0. If you are looking for the second term, you substitute r equal to 1 in that order. But what is n combination r? n combination r is nothing but n factorial divided by r factorial multiplied by n minus r also factorial. And again, what is n factorial? n factorial is equal to n multiplied by n minus 1, multiplied by n minus 2, multiplied by n minus 3. You keep on reducing, multiplying till you get to 1. Because if you have 5 factorial, this is the same thing as 5 multiplied by 4, multiplied by 3, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 1, then you stop. You see, we are reducing 5 by 1. 5 minus 1 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. The same thing, if you are looking for n factorial, you take n, you multiply by the next number, which is n minus 1. You keep on multiplying till you get to 1. This implies that n is a positive integer. All right, if this is the case, I would like to obtain like uh, three to four times of the expansion of x plus h to the power of n. Okay, this is the formula we are going to apply. If you are looking for the first term, you substitute r equal to zero. So let me look for the first term. The first term, that is when r equal to zero, we have what? Um, the only thing I would like to show you here is that our x will correspond to a here and h 
will correspond to B. All right. I can even remove them from here so that you see everything clearly. Instead of A plus B, I can write X plus H such that this A becomes the X and B becomes the H. Can you see that? So if we are looking for the first term, we are going to take this substitute R equal to zero. So we have N combination zero. A, which is x to the power of what n minus 0 because r is equal to 0 then we have h to the power of 0 we have h to the power of 0 so we need to simplify n combination 0 from the definition this is the definition of combination we have n combination 0 to be equal to n factorial Divide by 0 factorial multiplied by n minus 0 also factorial. And you should know that 0 factorial is equal to 1. So we have n factorial to the top, to the bottom. This is 1 and n minus 0 is still n. So we only have n factorial here. And you can see that this will cancel this. We end up having 1. So it means that n combination 0 is equal to 1. And we know that n minus 0 is still n. And h to the power of 0, according to the laws of indices, it is equal to 1. So from this time, we only have what? x to the power of n. x to the power of n is the first term in the expansion of x plus h to the power of n. Now let us look for the second term. If you're looking for the second term, our r will be equal to 1. So we have n combination 1 x raised to the power of n minus 1, h raised to the power of 1. Let us find n combination 1 from definition. It is equal to n factorial divided by 1 factorial multiplied by n minus 1 factorial, right? 1 factorial is 1, so 1 times this will still be that. But remember that n factorial is the same thing as n times the next number before it, which is n minus 1, times the next one, n minus 2. But since I have n minus 1 factorial to the bottom, I can stop at n minus 1 factorial. This is n times n minus 1 factorial divided by n minus 1 also factorial. This will cancel this, so this is equal to n. It means that n combination 1 is nothing but n. So we can simplify this to be n combination 1 is n. Then we have x to the power of n minus 1. h to the power of 1 is h times h. So this is our second term. Let us obtain one more term or two terms. So we have third term. That is when r is equal to 2. We have n combination 2. x raised to the power of n minus 2 h raised to the power of 2. The only thing we need to simplify here is n combination 2. n combination 2 is equal to n factorial divided by 2 factorial multiplied by n minus 2 also factorial. 2 factorial is 2 times 1 which is 2 but n factorial can be expanded as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. I can stop here because I have n minus 2 factorial here. So we have 2 times n minus 2 factorial to the bottom. This will cancel this. So the only thing we have here is n divided by 2 times n minus 1. Right? So this is equal to, for n combination 2, is this one, right? n divided by 2 times n minus 1. Then... We have x to the power of n minus 2, h raised to the power of 2. I think I can stop here and take the last term because the last term is also very important. We keep on increasing the value of r till r equals n. That is when we're going to stop. Because remember from definition, it is stated that um, you have to take r equal to 0 after n. You stop where r equal to n. So I would like to take this, 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 this up to the last term. The last term R equal to N. 
So we have what? N combination N, X raised to the power of N minus N, H raised to the power of N. So N combination N is equal to N factorial divided by N factorial times N minus N factorial. N minus N is zero, then zero factorial is one. So we only have N factorial divided by N factorial, which is equal to one. So the whole of this is equal to one. This is equal to one times n minus n is zero. X to the power of zero is one. So we only have h to the power of n. Can you see that? So now we can simply plug in these values. Let me just copy our limit problem. This is what we are simplifying. I only stop to expand this one. So we continue. This is equal to the limit as h approaches zero. Of what? You know the expansion of this? The first term was what? Remember, the first term is what? x to the power of n. So we have x to the power of n plus the second term, n x to the power of n minus 1 times h. n x to the power of n minus 1 multiplied by h plus the third term, which we have as what? The whole of this. Let me just copy that. So this is the third term. And you know that we skip some times. We add and skip some times after the last term. And the last term is h to the power of n. h to the power of n. But we still have minus x to the power of n. Minus x to the power of n. The whole of this divided by h. Okay, let's simplify. We have positive x to the power of n. We have negative x to the power of n, so they will cancel. And from here, we can divide every single term by h because all of these terms contain h. So we have the limit as h approaches 0. Uh, the first term contains only one h, and if you divide that by h, the h will go, leaving n x to the power of n minus 1. You move to the second term. It contains a h squared, so one of the h's will go, leaving n divided by 2 n minus 1 x to the power of n minus 2 times 1 h because it was h squared plus you keep on going after the last term, which is h to the power of n. According to the laws of indices, it will become h to the power of n minus 1 because this h has a power of 1. So according to one of the laws of indices, if you are dividing common basis, you subtract their exponents. So from here, we can substitute our limit. If you observe, all of these terms contain h except the first term. And wherever we have h, we are going to replace it with 0 because h is approaching 0. So this is equal to n x to the power of n minus 1 plus n divided by 2 n minus 1 times x to the power of n minus 2 times 0. You see, this is multiplication, so everything there will become 0. Plus, you keep on going after the last term, which is 0 to the power of n minus 1. So, all of this will become 0 except the first term, which is n x to the power of n minus 1. And this is nothing but the derivative of x to the power of n. Therefore, f prime of x equal to nx to the power of n minus 1. And that's exactly what we are asked to prove. Because you can see that if y is equal to x to the power of n, its derivative will be nx to the power of n minus 1. And by using the first principle, we are able to obtain that, which is this. Thank you for watching. Do share to your learning colleagues and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more exciting videos. Bye-bye.